What is up GT gang? Welcome back to the channel and today we have a very lengthy and tedious video ahead of us. So where are we? Right here flat out we are at my house and we are in a little 8x8, 8x10 shed where we rebuilt the dual overhead cam 3 liter V6 for the 3000 GT. So what a great ending to the story of this house and on to the next one is we're gonna rebuild this Hemi in the shed exactly where we started uh, and basically did a lot of modifications and learned a lot of things about cars and we're gonna finish it off right here with this 5.7 Hemi that's been bored over to a 6.1 liter. What we're doing today is gapping piston rings. So unfortunately, I bought file to fit rings. I meant to buy pre-gapped rings and I'm kinda kicking myself in the butt over it because I have to have the car running at the end of the week friday i will be moving into the house and my goal is to have it driving so i can drive it to the house it's currently sunday and i have no parts i get all my parts either tomorrow or the day after and i guess just join along on the journey guys and sit back grab some popcorn and enjoy we're gonna go ahead and take off the cover and grab the piston rings and the ring grinder and start gapping and i show you guys how to do it So for this job, pretty much everything you're gonna need is obviously your piston rings as well as pistons. You need a little bit of lubricant, brake cleaner, rags, and definitely need feeler gauges. These are Starrett. These are actually from my uncle, so I'm gonna hang really close. Uh, I'm really gonna keep a close eye on these. Uh, you'll obviously need your engine as well as a ring grinder of some sort. And we'll go ahead and get started. We're gonna start by working on one cylinder at a time, of course. We'll spray brake cleaner on a rag, wipe down the cylinder to get it uh, as bare as possible. When we're dealing with thousands of an inch, we want the surface to be exactly clean and perfectly clean. So we're gonna wipe it down with a little bit of brake cleaner and then uh, set the ring in and then grind it from there. And then when we're done doing all of the grinding and we're exactly positively sure that the piston ring is going to fit, uh, that's when we'll lubricate the cylinder again with whatever lubricant that you have. And we'll just, you know, all the way down from cylinder one to eight. And it's a very long, tedious process. When I did this with my 426 Hemi, it took me about five, six hours. So plan an entire day around this, guys, because it's going to take a while. We'll go ahead and throw you guys up on a time lapse, open everything up, and I'll show you the difference in the piston rings as well as how to set them in and how to get started. Okay, so I'm not gonna throw it on time lapse yet. This is part number from Mali for a 4055 bore file fit ring made in the United States of America. America. So we have a set right here labeled one, two, and three. One being the very top, two being the middle, and three being the very bottom. So we're actually only filing the first and second ring, top and middle rings. We do not file the oil ring. So right off the bat, we can get rid of this and then deal with just these two. Uh, since we are dealing with specific bore, you want to file fit a specific cylinder and then put them off to a side and then do another cylinder. So if you're making piston rings for the cylinder, those piston rings need to stay and off to the side for that cylinder. It's it's kind of common sense you would think, but um, I could see somebody being pretty lazy and file fitting off of one exact cylinder. The tolerance, everything should be the same, but at the same time, you don't wanna leave that up in the air. This cylinder's piston rings need to be file fit for the cylinder and filed on the cylinder. And then, you know, on and on and on and on throughout the entire block. So now that that's out of the way, I'm going to take out the number one piston ring and I'm actually gonna set it in the bore and go from there. So unfortunately it is raining right now and I had to move everything inside of this little tiny shed. So I have my ring grinder here and then my block is pushed away farthest as I possibly could get it with everything that's spread around here. And we're going to begin to grind rings. You wanna make sure that you are staying far away from the block 
it's not you're not gonna have shrapnel flying off so I'm about two three feet away so I'm good so where I was <laughs> I had to put everything back uh, I have to wipe down one cylinder with some brake clean uh, set in a, a piston ring take a piston push it down to where it's flush and nice and square with the block and then we'll begin to file fit them so as I was saying we have one two and three I described you guys what that was and what that represented so now I have rag a little bit of brake clean doesn't need to be much just enough to clean the cylinder right? and you'll be surprised but actually see how that was actually pretty dirty so we'll clean that all off now we're gonna grab a piston ring. We're gonna start with number one, set it in, and I'll show you guys the next step after that. All right, so we have the piston ring set into place, and we're just going to try to get it down as square as we possibly can, about an inch down into the cylinder. So, now that that is set into place, we can put the piston away. So this is what we're dealing with. I apologize for the lack of light. Our seam is right up above. It's a perfect fit. These are meant to be exact so that when you grind them down, uh, you can create your gap. So there will be no gap from the beginning. And you can see your little Mally indication right there that's pretty cool so what we're gonna end up doing is pulling this back out the reason why we put this in is to see what our gap is to start with and as we know there is going to be no gap but it's always been good habit to just place the piston ring in first it only takes a second to get it mocked up so now i'm going to take it out grind it a little bit at a time put it back in repeat the process over and over and over until you get your desired ring gap so i actually have a book that shows you exactly what your ring gap should be i'll go ahead and pull that up really quick okay so it's really kind of on and off raining so i'm going to step outside so these are your applications and the gap to uh an inch so we have street which is what i'm going to do which is up to 25 thousandths of an inch pretty wide open on what you can do but i'm going to go to 25 thousandths of an inch drag oval racing engine 18 to 20 nitrous street engine 20 to 22 nitrous drag engine 28 to 30 supercharged pro charged engine 24 to 26 so we're just going to shoot for that 25 thousandths that's a pretty damn close to what the supercharged turbocharger engine is so it's it's very similar but as you can tell thousands of an inch matter we're, going, we're talking a tolerance of three thousandths of an inch on most of these so you really don't have room to play you have to get this pretty exact and it's a very tedious job from start to finish it's going to take a while so I'm gonna go ahead and lock in that I'm gonna do 25 thousandths of an inch. Keep that in mind. And remember guys, if you're having a specific type of application such as drag racing or just supercharged in general, you can see that drag racing engine could be anywhere from six to eight thousandths of an inch difference in ring gap. So that can make a huge difference in your end game and can cause catastrophic failure. So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Here's the book that you can purchase on eBay. I think it's like $20. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on uh, filing these rings. So it took me about 15 minutes to get that. Uh, what I did was uh, I set the piston basically flush right here. And that's where I know it's it's dead nuts, nice and level. And you'll take uh, this Sterrett uh, feeler gauge set actually goes to 24 thousandths. And the book says up to 25 thousandths. So I'm just going to do 24 to make it easy for me. And you want to file it to where you have a very 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 tight fit 
and then go a little bit more you should be able to come in and out with this gauge with no resistance at all perfect fit now we're ready to go on to the second ring of this set for this cylinder i did want to mention that according to total seal a very well renowned renowned company that you want to be grinding downward so for instance we have a m that indicates the top so you actually want to be grinding this way spinning your wheel down towards uh as as best as i can describe it hopefully this makes sense let me just grab this quick basically you'll just have it like this and i like to hold it a little bit similar to this and this this isn't very sharp it's just a cut off wheel uh, hold it right here keeps it nice and square that's what these posts are for and i just rotate uh, clockwise on this direction with the indicator pointing up so now this one's done uh this is four cylinder number one and i'll go to three five seven and then two four six eight do that process over and over and over again uh if anything changes or i need to note something i will make sure to make a video of it but um should have pretty much most of these pistons done by the time you see this next clip so one thing i actually did want to add is in the book it says these numbers are for the top ring only in the past the gap recommendation was a tighter one but the strategy today is to go back to the wide grip approach for the second ring same as the top ring up to perhaps four thousandths of an inch larger so the fact that i went to 24 i need to go 28 thousandths of an inch now all right, everybody, so looking back through some footage, um, looks like I did not go any more in depth with it. So you'll have 24 thousandths of an inch. If you have the same application as mine, granted, um, go ahead and get that book. Uh, there's a lot to learn in that book. They have a lot of information that's uh, very valuable. But uh, if you don't get that book, go ahead and take a screenshot. I put it up on, on the, uh, the screen about halfway through the video. Go ahead and check that out. And um, I went 24 thousandths of an inch on the top ring and then 28 thousandths of an inch on the second ring. Did that all through, one through eight. And um, you just take your time, guys. I can, I can confidently say this took me anywhere between three and four hours. I did it the right way, took my time. And I even took a little file once I was done filing the rings. I took a small file, a little hand file, and took off any of the burrs so that it wouldn't scar the cylinders. So... Uh, if you guys have any questions or think I didn't go in depth, let me know. If I did a great job, let me know. If I did a terrible job, let me know. I'm always trying to be better. And I thank you guys for your support no matter what. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.